Interesting TCM and Acupuncture. Discussing the application of five elements theory in traditional Chinese medicine. Contents. Explaining the physiological functions of the five internal organs and their interconnections. Explaining the mutual influence of the diseases of the five organs. Guide to the diagnosis of diseases. Guide to the treatment of diseases. The application of the theory of the five elements in Chinese medicine. The application of the theory of the five elements in Chinese medicine is used to define and describe the physiological functions of the organs and viscera, meridians and collaterals, the structures of the body and its orifices, as well as the energetic and mental activities of the human body. The five element construct also seeks to establish a system of categories in pathology within a physiological paradigm that explains the relationship between the five central organs and nature. Within the Within this system of relationships, there is an emphasis on conceptually connecting the five organ system of the body with the changes of nature in order to establish a nature and humanity as one system school of medical analysis. In addition, the five element law of transformative relationships of the generation and control cycles is used to define the specific parameters within which the organs interact with one another. This also helps in establishing further potential changes within the relationships of the five elements, such as the overacting and insulting phases and the mother and child phases, which in turn explain the pathological relationships of the five organs. These forms of analysis govern the rules of diagnosis and treatment of Chinese medicine. As a result, the five elements theory serves as the conceptual core upon which Chinese medicine bases its philosophy of application and its approach to clinical organization. One. Explaining the physiological functions of the five elements. And the explaining the physiological functions of the five organs and their interconnections. One, explaining the physiological characteristics of the five internal organs. The study of the five elements assigns each of the five internal organs of the body to their respective elements and uses the characteristics of the five elements to explain the function of each of the organs. For instance, wood has the characteristic of growth, rising, smoothing, and extending. The liver prefers to extend and dislikes depression. It has a tendency to dredge and circulate qi and blood and can regulate and smooth the emotions. Thus, liver is energetically connected to the wood element. How the design of the five organ systems reflects the relationship between nature and the human body. The theory of the five elements not only uses the characteristics of the elements to draw comparisons to physiological processes of the five internal organs and determines the attributes of the five internal organs, but also uses the five internal organs as the focal point to deduce various organizational structures and functions of the human body. This process integrates the body's shape, organs, spirits, emotions, and so on, and divides each characteristic into its respective organ, constructing a physiological and pathological system centered on the five internal organs. At the same time, the five directions, five chi, five colors, and five flavors of the natural world are connected with the five internal organs of the human body. This establishes the foundational rules by the by five organs may serve as the center of, the, of humanity and nature as one body system of the five organs, which unites the human body and the external environment into a closely connected whole. As a practical example, the simple questions text of the Yellow Emperor internal classic says, wind is generated in the east, wind generates wood, wood generates sour, sour generates the liver, the liver generates the tendons, and the liver governs the eyes. The east is represented by the color green. It enters and connects via the liver. It opens the orifice of the eyes. It contains the essence of the liver. In, in, when there is illness of the liver, it causes surprise. Its taste is sour and it is associated with the category of wood and green plants. 
This is how we can come to know that illnesses of the liver are located in the tendons. These explanations combine the elements of the east, green, wind, and sourness from the natural world with the functions of the liver, tendons, and eyes of the human body in order to create a systems-based approach which can explain the interaction of the human body with elements of nature through the use of the concept of wood. Explaining the physiological connection between the five or internal organs. The theory of the five elements not only uses the nature of each element to explain the functional characteristics of the five internal organs, it also uses the theory of the restraint of the five elements to illustrate the internal connection of the physiological functions of the organs. That is, the five internal organs have mutually beneficial and contradictory relationships. The mutual generation of the five elements in the generation cycle of the five organs. Wood generates fire, and therefore, according to the generation cycle of the five elements, the liver contains the blood required to support the heart. The liver is also able to perform an action of dredging and draining the blood, which assists the heart in the movement of blood. To further elaborate, fire generates earth, therefore, the heart generates the spleen. The yang energy of the heart provides the warmth required to nurture the earth element of the spleen. As such, it assists in the transportation and transformation element of the spleen. As such, it assists in the transformation process of the spleen. Earth generates metal and therefore the spleen generates the lung. As such, the transporting and transforming function of spleen qi enables the transformed qi to supply the lung. Metal generates water. Therefore, the lung generates the kidney. And so the essential fluid to the lung descends and increases the essence available to the kidneys. The descent of lung qi also assists in the ability of the kidneys to grasp and obtain the qi they need to perform their functions. Water generates wood, and therefore the kidneys contain essence which may then proliferate to nurture the liver. The kidney yin provides the material support which assists the liver yin in protecting against potential injury caused by the upward spread of liver yang. How the five elements mutual control cycle decides the regulation of the five organs. The kidneys regulate the heart in the same way that water controls fire. As a result, the water of the kidneys has the function of ascending to serve the heart in order to protect against damage, which could be done by the fire of the heart. The heart regulates the function of the organs in the same way as fire controls metal. The fire of the heart is yang and hot in nature, and thus stops the lungs from overacting in their tendency to clean the qi. The lung regulates the liver and in the same way that metal controls wood. So the cleaning and clearing activity of the lung can regulate the upward movement of liver qi. The liver regulates the spleen in the same way that water controls wood. So liver qi can adjust and dredge the spleen qi uh, and its tendency to collect and stagnate. The spleen qi can regulate the function of the kidneys in the same way that earth controls water. The spleen, tree the spleen qi transports and transforms water and damp, thus protecting against an overflow of dampness from the kidneys. Explaining the regulatory relationship of the five organs through the lens of physiological transformation. From the perspective of the human body, it can be said that each of the five organs plays a part in the generation of the other. As such, one organ is generated from another organ, and in turn, it generates an organ. To clarify about what this means, it means that each organ may offer capital for the development of another organ without exhausting its own resources at the same time. And each organ may control the actions of its neighbor while not excessively diminishing its neighbor's function. For instance, in the case that spleen qi is deficient, Heart fire will increase in order to add subsidy to the generation of spleen earth, which fits into the five elements relationship of fire generating earth. In the case that liver chi is in excess, it may be caused by a deficiency of lung chi. If kidney water becomes overactive, the spleen earth may act to control it. This control relationship combines the five organs into a system of relationships and is meant to behave as a means by which the harmony of nature and the inner body may be maintained as one. To offer a practical illustration of how this works,
If the chi of the lungs is in deficit, it will be more likely for conditions such as cough to present themselves. In this case, we must increase lung chi to stop the cough and at the same time increase spleen chi. The key point is that the physiological functions of the five organs are predicated on their mutual assistance and mutual control systems. Moreover, there are many functions of the five organs and their relationships are intricate and complex in nature. The five elements cannot be used to describe every function of the organs and it would be also difficult for us to use only generation and control to explain the multiplicity of physiological functions performed by the body. Therefore, when we research these complex relationships, we must not limit ourselves purely to the categories of generation and control. Part two, explaining the mutual influence of the diseases of the five organs. Theory of the five elements is not only a measure by which to explain the relationship of the organs and viscera, but can also be used to clarify their relationship to disease. Whenever one organ is affected by disease, it can also transmit disease to its neighbor. And when a secondary organ is affected, it can also have an effect on the disease condition of the first organ. This interconnected relationship is called pathological transformation and change, and is the method of explaining the process by which organs become ill and transmit disease. This can be further divided into disease transmission of mutual generation and mutual control. The transformation of mutual relations, the transmission of mutual relations, including mother disease and child and child disease and mother, two aspects. The pathogenic transmission relationship of diseased mother affecting the child and diseased child affecting the mother. Disease transformation between mother and child. There are two modes of disease transmission between mother and child. One, diseased, diseased mother affecting the child. Two, diseased child affecting the mother. In the condition of diseased mother affecting the child, the mother organ's illness reaches the child organ and affects it. For instance, the kidneys represent water and the liver represents wood. So water can generate wood, which places the kidneys as the mother organ and the, livers as, as the, and the liver as the child organ. When an illness of the kidneys reaches the liver, this is the transmission of mother to child. This is commonly seen in clinic when the kidney essence is not sufficient to nourish the liver blood and results in deficiency of essence and blood in the kidneys and liver. When the kidney yin is insufficient, it cannot nurture the liver wood and results in the rising of liver yang. In the case that kidney yang is not sufficient, there may be a resulting inability to support liver yang, causing abdominal pain due to cold. Both of these cases are mother organs transmitting illness to the child. Most often, the condition of mother transmitting illness to the child become, comes from an original deficiency in the mother organ, leading to deficiency in the child. Example, if the mother is able to work, there will be food for her child. But if the mother loses her job, the child will not have enough to eat. Child transferring illness to the mother. The liver is defined by the wood element and the heart is defined by fire. The liver can generate fire and thus is the mother organ. The heart is the child organ. When an illness of the heart attacks the liver, the child's disease affects the mother. In clinic, we see this in cases such as heart blood deficiency caused, uh, causing liver blood to become deficient as a result. Once the heart illness arrives at the liver, it is the case of the child causing the mother to become diseased. Because the heart fire blazes in the extreme, it moves the fire to the liver and the liver and heart simultaneously blaze. This is an example of the child causing the mother to become ill so that both organs are diseased. 
The disease of the child being transmitted to the mother can happen as a result of the deficiency of the child affecting the mother or the excess of the child affecting the mother. There are also conditions in which the excess of the child may cause deficiency in the mother and in which the child may steal from the chi of the mother, causing a deficiency. For instance, if liver fire is in excess, it can cause the kidney to become deficient. To give an analogy, if a child does not have work, the mother must use her own resources to support it. If the, tongue, if the tongue tip is red and the urine is yellow, we can say with certainty that there is a heat condition. After enough time, the liver will generate extreme fire and the patient will be more likely to become angry and easily frustrated. And the sides of the tongue will become red. This indicates that heart fire has reached the liver and caused liver fire, meaning that the child has transmitted some of its illness to the mother. Transmission of the relationship between phase and restraint, including multiplying and insulting. Multiplying is too much disease. There are two reasons for the multiplication of the five internal organs. One is that a certain viscera is too full and the viscera that it wins is excessively knocked down. The other is that a certain viscera is too weak and cannot tolerate the normal restraint of its invincible viscera. For example, in terms of the mutual restraint relationship between liver wood and spleen soil, there are two cases of multiplication and transformation. Mu wang cheng tu, i.e. liver qi multiplying the spleen, is due to deficiency of the spleen. When liver qi stagnation or liver qi upside down affects the spleen and stomach's transport and transformation functions, the chest and flanks are filled with pain. Abdominal distension and pain, pathogenic acid, pool diarrhea, etc., is called muang chengtu. Otherwise, the spleen and stomach are weak and cannot tolerate the attack of the liver qi. And symptoms such as dizziness, fatigue, appetite, belching, chest pain, abdominal pain, and diarrhea are all called tu xue mu cheng. For example, everyone was very happy to have dinner and the son showed his father his transcript, but unfortunately he had a failing grade. Suddenly the father lost his appetite and didn't want to eat dinner. This is a typical liver chi affecting the spleen. Insult. Insult is reverse restraint in treatment. There are also two situations in which the five internal organs are insulted. That is, too much insult and too little insult. Too much insult refers to a pathological phenomenon in which a certain organ is too overbearing, causing it to be overwhelmed and un unable to be restrained. For example, lung metal instinctively restrains the liver tree, liver wood, and due to anger, the liver fire becomes hyperactive. The lung metal is not only incapable of restraining the liver wood, but is reversibly restrained by the liver fire, resulting in irritability and red eyes and even coughing up cheek. Symptoms such as hemoptitis and anti-insult -in to lung metal are called wood, fire, and metal. Inferior insults refer to the pathological phenomenon of anti-knock in the organs and it, wins due to the damage of a certain organ. If the spleen and wood are in deficiency, they cannot restrict the kidney water. If the, sorry, if the spleen and soil are in deficiency, they cannot restrict the kidney water. The whole, whole body edema appears, which is called soil deficiency and water insult. In short, the mutual influence of the five Zang organ diseases can be explained by the five elements multiplication and the law of mother and child interactions. If the liver is diseased, the disease is transmitted to the heart, which is the mother's disease affecting the child. The disease is transmitted to the kidney, which is the child's disease affecting the mother. The disease is transmitted to the spleen, which is multiplication. The disease is transmitted to the lung, which is an insult. The other four organs, and so on. In addition, using the five elements theory can also explain the relationship between the onset of the five internal organs and the season. There should, be, there should be a simultaneous relationship between the time of day, time of season, and the five internal organs. So the general law of the 
onset of illness in the five internal organs is that disease occurs when the five internal organs are affected. That is, liver disease frequently occurs in spring, heart disease in summer, spleen disease toward the end of the summer, lung disease in autumn, and kidney disease in winter. That's the law of the five elements, regeneration and restraint. The complex physiological relationship between the five internal organs cannot be fully explained. So the mutual influence of the diseases of the five internal organs is also difficult to fully explain through five elements, multiplication, and the law of mother-child interaction. Part three, guide to the diagnosis of diseases. The human body is an organic whole. And when the organs become diseased, their function is impacted, causing a change in their natural relationships. It is possible to observe this change on the outside of the body through changes in complexion, tone of voice, posture, pulse, and other metrics. This was explained by the philosopher Mencius, who said, all which occurs inside is also present on the outside. Theory of the five elements explains the five organs of the body in relation to the five colors found in nature, the five tones, the five flavors, and much more. This all creates a complex relationship of mutual affect and illustrates the purpose of the concept of humanity and nature as one system in Chinese medicine. This is why Chinese medicine supports the concept of the four methods of integration, interrogation, which include vision, listening, questioning, and palpating. These four diagnostic methods are all performed on the surface of the body and can give a representation of what is happening in the internal organs and how the four cycles of generation, control, overacting, and insult of the five elements are occurring in the body. From here, we can determine the location of disease in the organs and define the disease, allowing us to determine a course of action and treatment. According to the original organ chapter of the spiritual pivot, observing the outer form may allow us to know the internal organs. Determining the location of illness of the five internal organs. The theory of the five elements holds that the activities of the five elements define the mechanisms of illness of the five organs according to the principles of generation, control, overaction and insult, and may provide us with information about the location of disease in the organs. This includes color, flavor, and pulse presentation as elements of diagnosis. These aspects can also be used to define the pathological changes in the relationships of the five elements. If the color of the face is green and the patient likes to eat sour foods and has a wiry pulse, we may be fairly secure in diagnosing them with the liver disorder. But if the face is red, the mouth flavor is bitter, and the pulse is overflowing, it's safe to say that they have an excess as fire in the heart. People with spleen deficiency may present with greenness in their face, which could be a sign that wood is overacting on earth and that liver chi is injuring the spleen. 
People with heart illnesses whose faces are dark in continence may be experiencing water over controlling fire, in which case the kidney is bubbling up into the heart. The 81 difficulties says, you may know through observation, observe the five colors and know the illness. Listen to the five sounds and know the illness. Ask about the desires of the patient and know the illness. Palpitate the pulse and know the illness. Observe excess and deficiency and know the illness. This way you will know which organs are affected. Two, infer the severity of the condition. The theory of the five elements follows the five colors and their creation and control cycle to understand the severity of an illness. This can also be used to understand the change of pathological conditions between the organs. This is typically done by observing the color of the face and any change which may occur in complexion. As a result, it's possible to determine what is the original color and what is the guest color. The five elements creation and control cycles are predicated on a basic premise that all illness conditions follow the conditions of following and rebelling. The original color of the complexion refers to the original color associated with the five organs. The guest color refers to a color which occurs at a specific time. When the original color tends to be victorious over the guest color, we can say that the body is rebelling against the normal flow of time and events. In the case that the guest color is victorious over the original color, then the body is complying with the normal flow of time. In the Qing Dynasty text, the ancestral medicine basket, it says, the liver is green, the heart is red, the spleen is yellow, the lung is white, the kidney is black. There, these are the five constant colors. The organ colors are, are original and the guest colors only appear at special times. The spring is green and summer is red, fall is white and winter is black, and the transitional seasons are yellow. In the case that the colors appear in those seasons, it will be problematic. Thus it's said that when the guest defeats the original color, it's a good sign, and when the original color defeats the guest, it's a bad sign. This is because guest colors are meant to show up in certain seasons of the year. For instance, during the winter, the complexion will darken somewhat since the Taiyang aspect of the body is naturally in decline during the coldest months of the year. Theory of the five elements views color and pulse presentation as simultaneously occurring. The color and the pulse may be inspected and can be viewed according to the natural cycles of generation and control of the five elements in order to better understand the characteristics of illness. If the liver is diseased and the pulse is wiry and the face has some green characteristics, this means that the face color and pulse are in agreement. If it's not a wiry pulse, but instead is a floating pulse, this is an example of excess and should be seen as a pulse within the controlling cycle. In this case, there is a rebellion occurring. According to the spiritual pivot, if you obtain the pulse of, of phase victory, the patient will die. If you obtain the pulse of phase defeat, the disease will be beaten. There are thousands of ways in which an illness can transform, so you must perform the correct diagnosis and work hard on mastering the four methods of diagnosis. It's not enough to simply understand the principle of the five elements in diagnosis. There must be an appropriate comprehension of diagnostic methods to obtain any medical benefit in treatment. Part 4, Guide to the Treatment of Diseases. The five elements theory guides the treatment of diseases, mainly in according to the color and taste of the medicine, according to the five elements to guide the use of the internal organs, according to the law of the five elements to control the transmission of diseases and determine the treatment rules and treatment methods, guide acupuncture and moxibustion and the treatment of emotional diseases.
One, instruct the viscera to use medicine. Different drugs have different colors and smells. In terms of color, there are five colors, green, red, yellow, white, and black. In terms of smell, there are five flavors, sour, bitter, sweet, pungent, and salty. The relationship between the five colors, five flavors, and five internal organs of medicines is based on the natural colors and flavors and their different properties and meridians and determined in accordance with the attribution of the five elements. That is, green and sour taste enters the liver, red and bitter taste enters the heart, yellow and sweet taste enters the spleen, white and pungent taste enters the lung, black and salty taste enters the kidneys. For example, radix, panioi, pane, rubra and dogwood taste sour and enter the liver meridian to replenish the essence and blood of the liver. Danshan tastes bitter and is red, entering the heart meridian to invigorate blood and soothe the nerves. Ginseng is raw earth in color, black and tastes salty, entering the kidney meridian to nourish kidney yin and so on. In addition to color and taste, clinical viscera medication must also be combined with the four chi of cold heat, uh, temperate and cool of the drug, as well as the performance of a comprehensive analysis and dialectical application. Control the spread of disease. According to the theory of the five elements, when one of the five internal organs is diseased, it can spread illness to the other four internal organs and cause pathological change. If the liver is diseased, it can affect the heart, lungs, spleen, and kidneys, and other organs. Disease of the heart, lung, spleen, and kidney can also affect the liver. The pathological changes of different viscera are different. Therefore, in clinical treatment, in addition to the treatment of the diseased internal organs, other internal organs should also be treated according to the nature of their transmission to prevent further transmission to other organs. If the liver chi is too excessive or stagnant and rising, wood will overact on earth and the disease will affect the spleen and stomach. At this time, the spleen chi should be cultivated in advance on the basis of soothing the liver and calming the liver so that the liver chi is calm and the spleen is healthy. Then the liver disease will not pass to the spleen. As stated in the 77 difficulties, when you see the disease of the liver, you know that the liver will act on the spleen. So you should first activate the spleen. Here, activate the spleen refers to the treatment of liver disease on the basis of supplementing the spleen and strengthening the spleen. Whether the disease spreads or not depends on the energetic fluctuation of the internal organs. Prosperity results in transmission. Deficiency results in acceptance. It's the basic law of the transmission and change of disease of the five internal organs. In clinical practice, we must not only grasp the law of transmission and change of the five internal organs according to the relationship between the five elements for fear that such an adjustment will be insufficient. Instead, we must control the transmission in order to prevent, prevent future problems. At the same time, it is necessary to treat the disease according to the correct differentiation and specific condition rather than using a rigid formula of treatment. Determine the rule of government. The theory of the five elements is not only used to explain the physiological functions and pathological changes of the human viscera to guide the diagnosis and prevention of disease, but also used to determine the principles and methods of treatment of diseases by the law of the five elements, mutual generation and mutual constraint. Determine the rules and methods of governance based on the law of the five elements, mutual generation. In clinical application of the five elements, mutual generation to treat diseases, the basic principle is to replenish the mother and drain the child. That is, the 81 difficulties says, deficiency requires you to tonify the mother, excess requires you to drain the child. Tonifying the mother refers to the application of a clinical action which adds to the function of the deficient organ in order to allow it to recover. Simultaneously, it's required to follow the creation phase of the five elements and tonify the mother organ. In this way, it's possible for the effect of the treatment to systematically be carried out from mother to child. Draining the child refers to the disease condition of an organ that is not restricted to times when the original organ is in excess and requires the draining of pathogenic chi. It can also refer to the generation cycle of the five elements and may refer to a time when the child organ may be drained in order to dampen the excess pathogenic chi of the, internal, of the original organ. We may choose to drain the mother organ of excess chi, but draining the child organ can assist us in the case that both organs are in excess. If liver fire is victorious, we must use a medicine which can defeat liver fire, such as long dan cao, chai hu, and so on. We must also drain the fire of the heart, perhaps by using sheng di or shui tong. 
Once the heart chi is able to affect the mother organ of the liver, then the liver chi can be absorbed by the heart. At this point, it's possible to reduce liver fire. For example, if a household has a child that always gets in trouble, the house will waste a lot of its time and resources on the child. So it would be better just to train the child not to cause trouble. Draining the child can relieve many problems. The treatment methods determined according to the law of the integration of the five elements are often useful. Four methods, the method of nourishing water and cultivating wood, the method of replenishing fire and soil, the method of cultivating soil to produce metal, and the method of producing metal and water. Nourishing water to increase wood. Nourishing kidney yin will lead to liver yin regulation. This is also called nourishing the kidney to nurture the liver, or nourishing, nourish and tonify the liver and kidney method. It's useful in cases of kidney yin deficiency when liver yin is also deficient. It's also useful when liver yang is in excess. Increasing fire to tonify earth. This method warms liver yang and tonifies the spleen yang. It's also called warming kidney and building the spleen and warming and tonifying the spleen and kidneys. It's useful when the kidney yang is deficient and it causes the spleen yang to become shaken. Adding to earth to generate metal. This method builds the spleen and generates and tonifies qi in the lungs. It is used when the spleen qi is deficient and causes rootlessness of qi resulting in weakness of the lung. It is most useful when there are problems with transportation of the spleen. Metal water mutual generation. This is when yin is boosted and nurtured in lung and kidney. It can also be called adding and nurturing the lung and kidneys and is used to assist the lung yin deficiencies, which make it possible to adjust kidney yin. Or when kidney yin is deficient and it's not possible to increase yin lung yin due to a mutual deficiency of both organs. Determine the rules of treatment according to the control cycle of the five elements. In clinic, it's common to use the control cycle of the five elements to treat illness. The basic method is to restrain the strong and help the weak. The human body's five element control cycle can easily become pathogenic due to overactivity or insult, which can result in disease. This principle does not leave the rules of excess action and insufficient activity. Excess activity refers to the abundance of strength, which causes a system of five elements to come under attack. Insufficient activity refers to a time that a system enters decline. This may be treated through restraining the strong and helping the weak. This can allow for the treatment of an overabundance of power and help weakness to be quickly brought back to normal strength. Restraining the strong. This method uses the controlling cycle to stop an excess from contributing to or overacting or insult. For instance, if liver chi rebels, it may overact on the spleen and attack the stomach. In this case, we will be presented with the issue of liver and spleen becoming uncoordinated and liver and stomach losing harmony. This is called bright wood mounting earth and its treatment principle is found in dredging the liver meridian so the liver chi becomes stable. Because wood controls earth, it's possible for earth chi to become sluggish or damp and cause heat in the spleen and stomach. It's also possible for cold damp to appear in these organs. If they do not obtain the control of wood, they will return to insult wood and cause liver to be unable to dredge its energy. This is called earth revolting against wood. The treatment method for this problem is in removing the dampness from the spleen and subduing its strength. This, may, this way, the weak liver can have a chance to improve its condition. Assisting the weak. This method uses mutual restraint in a situation when deficiency is led to overaction or insult. If the spleen and stomach are weak and the liver chi may overact and enter the vacuous organs, causing disharmony of liver and spleen. This is called empty earth mounting wood or empty earth thieving wood. The best treatment method for this condition is in building the spleen and increasing the chi. Because earth originally controls water, it's possible that if spleen chi is deficient, it may not be able to control water. In such cases, the kidney water may return to insult the spleen. This is called empty earth is insulted by water. It's treated by strengthening the spleen. Assisting the weak is meant to add to the strength of the body and can assist in nurture, returning the organs back to their normal function. Within this area of practice, it's common to see four treatment models, including subduing wood and helping earth, helping earth and controlling water, helping metal to level water, and draining the south to tonify the north. Restraining wood and helping earth. This involves dredging the liver and building the spleen and stomach as a means to heal disharmony of liver and stomach and attack by the liver on the stomach. It's also called dredging the liver and building the spleen, adjusting the liver and spleen, and so on. 
It is best used when wood is flourishing and overacting on earth. It can also be used when earth is weak, which causes wood to overact. In the former case, we should subdue wood, while in the latter, we should support earth. Adding to earth to regulate water. This method strengthens the spleen in order to benefit water and help with damp conditions leading to illness. It is also called humbling the earth to help water. It should be used in cases where the transport function of the spleen is not working properly, such as edema and swelling. Adding to metal to level water. This method involves adding to the lung yin to clear liver fire and treating the liver fire attacking the lung. It's also called adding to the lung to clear the liver. It's used when there is not enough lung yin, which results in liver fire flaring up into the lung. Draining the cells to tonify the north. This is the practice of draining the heart in order to tonify the kidney. It's used to treat conditions of non-communication between heart and kidney. It's also called draining fire in order to nourish water or adding to yin to descend fire. Typically, it's used for people with kidney yin deficiency, heart fire blazing, disequanimity of water and fire, heart and kidney non-communication, and so on. Because the heart controls fire and fire is in the south, kidney controls water and water is in the north. Then it's given the unique name of draining the south to tonify the north. If the yin of the kidney is not sufficient, it cannot rise up to support the heart and therefore must in we must increase the kidney yin. We must also point out that the kidney is the home of water and fire. So if the kidney yin is deficient, it could also cause kidney fire to blaze. This is also known as water not regulating fire and is usually caused by the loss of equilibrium of the water and fire in the kidneys. In summary, you must follow the creation and control cycles of the five elements in order to understand the cause of an illness and its treatment method. This is how to arrive at the correct diagnosis and treatment in clinical application. However, when it comes to the process of diagnosis and treatment, you must consider both in their entirety. If you focus excessively on treating the mother, you may also harm the child. If you, focus, if you focus excessively on the child, you may harm the mother. If you focus too much on controlling strengths, you may overlook the need to support weakness. If you focus too much on supporting weakness, you may overlook controlling an overactive organ. Because of this, it's vital to obtain clinical experience in order to allow you to obtain the best results. Choosing acupoints. In acupuncture treatment, it's essential to understand the five shu points of jing, ying, shu, jing, and he points on the limbs and at the ends of the digits. These points represent the road to the distal terminus of the origin and, or, and origin points of the 12 upright meridians. These points can be used to assist in the regulation of the five elements in treatment of zangfu illnesses. In order to use this treatment, you must understand different conditions and their principles in order to correctly choose points. If you're treating liver deficiency, you should choose to treat according to the principle of when there's deficiency, tonify the mother, and treat the he points of the kidney, the water he point, known as ingu. You can also treat the liver hua points of Chuchuan in order to treat according to the principle of moving water. If treating liver excess, you should focus on draining the child. You can choose to treat the heart meridian ying point of Xiaofu, a fire point, or the metal ying point of Xingjian in order to tonify deficiency and drain excess so that the organs can recover health. Treatment of emotional diseases. People's emotional activity is also affected by the five elements, and emotions are diverse and variable. If one is injured by a deficiency of an organ, it will express itself in the mutual generation and control cycles of the five elements. People's, emotional, people's emotions follow the changes of the organs closely. In clinic, it's possible to change the emotions through correct application of the theory of the five elements. It said, anger injures the liver. Grief defeats anger. Joy injures the heart. Fear defeats joy. Thought injures the spleen. Anger defeats thought. Worry injures the lung. Joy defeats worry. Fear injures the kidney. Thought injures fear. This is the basic method of treating emotional disorders and uses the principle of emotion defeating emotion as its essence. The five elements generation and control cycles are some of the most powerful tools that Chinese medicine practitioners have available to them. But this is just a short introduction and it's not possible for all illnesses to be treated and characterized by the five elements. Clinical experience decides how we use the generation and control cycles of the elements to help us treat and diagnose illness. Thank you for watching.